Okay, so let's talk about the, or let's look at the second neuron model. As you can see that this neuron model is a bit different than the last one, um, but you still kind of have that same um, pattern to it. You've got the big bulbous thing at the top, that's the cell body or the soma. You've got the synaptic terminals, which in this case kind of are this peach color, and you've got the dendrites that are coming off of our cell body. You can also see the beginning of the axon, with the axon hillock being the very first or initial segment. So opening that cell body, you can see the nucleus, you can see the nucleolus in kind of a dark deep maroon in here, they're multiple. You can see the Golgi in red. You've got the nissel bodies, okay, in the lighter blue color. Um, lysosomes are going to be these yellow bubbles that you see. Neurofibrils, you can see the lines here. And like I said, the axon hillock is that first segment that you've got right here. Um, still have the synaptic terminals, still have the dendrites coming off of that. Um, these red bean looking things are going to be our mitochondria, okay? And you don't see them opened up until you get into the axon, which I'll show you in just a minute. But this is the axon, the surface of the axon, the membrane of the axon is going to be the axolemma. Again, why? Because they have to make everything complicated. Looking at the axon that has been cut open, you've got the axoplasm, the gooey inside the cell. Here is my Schwann cell with its myelin sheath, the nucleus of the Schwann cell up here, okay? You also have that node of Ranvier. You can see that little squiggly line right there. And here are my mitochondria, those same or that same red color from the cell body. It's just that in the axon, they're cut in half. So you can see the little squiggly going on inside of that. Um, axoplasm, mitochondria. There's my node of Ranvier. Here's my Schwann cell. Here's the myelin sheath. There's that node of Ranvier all covered up. And then you've got that endoneurium, that connective tissue layer that surrounds every single axon. Now, looking at a longitudinal section of axons, see these things? They almost look like they're kissing here. Okay, these are these. Okay, it's where those Schwann cells are making that node of Ranvier. So if you look, you can see them here, you can see it here, you can see it here. Um, just saw it and I lost it here. You can see where they look like they're kissing each other. So you've got those nodes of Ranvier. The Schwann cells are the cells that you are seeing here, okay? And the axon, see that stick in the middle here? You can see it there, you can see it right there. That would be the axon itself, just like what we see here with the Schwann cell and then that axon dead center in the middle. Okay, so the axon terminal, remember that's the little feet at the end, okay? So we've got these presynaptic terminals. Remember, terminal means the end. So we can call them axon terminals. Looks like this in your book. You've got the synaptic cleft being the space between where this um, axon terminal is and the next cell or the postsynaptic membrane is. That cleft, just like the cleft in John Travolta's chin, is a space. Internally, you've got these little synaptic vesicles that are housing your neurotransmitter, okay? So we've got voltage-gated calcium channels. We've got synaptic vesicles with their neurotransmitter inside of them. We've got the synaptic cleft. We've got the post-synaptic membrane. Again, you can call this a presynaptic terminal or you can call it an axon terminal. I don't care which one you decide to use, okay? Now, here's the model, all right? So basically what I'm doing is, wait a minute, sorry, went too far. I'm taking one of these little feet and I'm blowing it up so you can see inside of it, okay? 
So I've got neurofibrils. I still have the axoplasmic reticulum, AKA the nissel body in the cell, but what, or I should say the cell body, the soma. But why do I call it the axoplasmic reticulum? Because it's in the axon and I'm a scientist and I have to make everything complicated. Um, my mitochondria has a little squiggly inside, can't miss it. There's a neurofilament in pink. You can see another one over here and one behind here. Um, here are my synaptic vesicles, those little bubbles that you see. Internally, I've got neurotransmitter, and this one and this one are exocytosing with their neurotransmitter. You can see it fusing with that presynaptic membrane, okay? And then this space that you see between this plastic and the end of the model would be that synaptic cleft, okay? So looking at histology, as I said before in part one, a nerve is actually a whole bunch of these cells all braided together. I always talk about, at least when we're in class and face to face, I always talk about um, a, uh, an extension cord or an electrical cord. If you take the rubber off of an extension cord, it's not like there's one solid piece of metal in there. There are a whole bunch of fibers of metal that are kind of all braided together. A nerve is basically the same thing, except you've got kind of different levels of gathering. So here is one individual axon. You can see the axon, you can see the Schwann cell. The connective tissue that surrounds it is called the endoneurium, okay? And you can see there's a bundle of these wrapped axons put together by another type of connective tissue called the perineurium. And each one of these little bundles is called a fascicle, okay? Now, a nerve is not just um, neurons, it's not. You've got arteries and veins and fat pads and other kind of packing material to make sure that you're getting um, the right shape that you want. So you've got arteries and veins, you've got the fat, you've got kind of that connective, um, <clears throat> loose connective tissue. And then you've got the epineurium. The epineurium is the thing that kind of brings it all together. If we're talking about an extension cord, I'll just use this as an example, that is going to be this outermost covering, okay? This is the cord to my computer, I know, but just go with me on it, okay? So that epineurium kind of brings everything together. <clears throat> so, this is the cross section of a nerve and this is at about 40x so it's not really magnified a whole ton but do you see these little things here that's these things here okay so you've got the epineurium kind of on the outside you've got the perineurium right next to the bundle and then you've got the endoneurium around these little axons. You can see the dots. Each one of those dots is going to be an axon. Now I know from here it's really hard to see. And then you've got the bundle of axons, which is the same as this bundle of axons or the fascicle. Now, up close, okay? You've got each one of these being an axon. So you've got the endoneurium surrounding them. Okay, that's the endoneurium. The perineurium is surrounding that bundle. And then the epineurium, see that dark pink? That is going to be the epineurium. Well, I shouldn't say dark pink because this is dark pink, but um, the salmon color for the girls. Okay. And then, like I said, the black dots that you're seeing dead center in the middle, those are the axons. This is, instead of cutting that nerve like a lifesaver like this, now I've cut it this direction, okay? So I cut it long ways. It's a longitudinal section. You can see the epineurium very clearly here. And then this would be that bundle of axons, that um, fascicle that's been surrounded by the perineurium. 
Now let's talk spinal cord. The only structure that you have in your body um, that has a butterfly in it. I've never seen any other part of the body that has a butterfly. So if you see a butterfly, you should automatically knee jerk reaction, say spinal cord, because it's got a butterfly in the middle of it. You can't really mistake it for anything else. So this is what your spinal cord looks like if we were to cut it like lifesavers, okay? You have the butterfly in the middle and then these structures on the outside. I want you to notice that there is a color difference. The butterfly is gray. The columns are not. The butterfly is actually gray matter. Remember we said earlier that if you have the um, myelin sheaths, you're white matter. If you don't, you're gray matter. So the butterfly in this case is gray matter. The columns or this outer rim that is surrounding my butterfly, they are always going to be white matter. And again, if you actually have a human spinal cord that you're slicing into pieces, you will see a difference in those colors between the gray and the white. There is actually a, a, a color difference there. It isn't just that they're saying, you know, oh, well, this is because of this and this is because of that, but you can't see it. You can actually see it. So with your spinal cord slides and with your spinal cord model, you're going to need to know color, direction, and shape. If you know those things, you don't have to memorize all of these bits and pieces. You literally just have to know color, name, and shape. So we know that the butterfly is gray. That's one thing, right? So let's say instead of having this nice soft shape to the wings, the wings kind of looked like that, okay? That shape could be considered the shape of a horn, okay? Like a cow horn, right? So now we've got shape and we've got color. Let's talk about direction for a minute. When you look at the spinal cord, if you look, you'll notice that the wings of the butterfly here actually are all the way to the edge, cutting off this one piece of white matter, right? There is actual um, block of that white matter all by itself. Here though, you'll notice that this white matter is continuous. These wings, these horns, do not come all the way to the edge, right? Okay, now why do I mention this? Why did I, did I say this? Because you can always tell the front from the back of the spinal cord because of how these wings look. If there is white matter up here, this is going to be the front. Since there isn't on the edge of these wings, this is going to be the back. Now, way back when we were going through directional terms, I mentioned that your, um, well, science in general tends to have um, kind of words that mean the same thing and they'll interchange them. So front was anterior. You could also use ventral back was posterior you could also use dorsal and when it comes to the directions of this particular figure you actually see both used now me personally i like anterior and posterior because those i can remember fairly easily ventral i always have to think of dorsal and the dorsal fin of a shark i don't care which one you use you can use dorsal you can use um Posterior, you can use ventral, you can use anterior, whichever you are more, most comfortable with. But for the sake of being just, I guess, um, can't think of the word, consistent. There we go. For the sake of being consistent, I'm going to go with posterior and anterior. Okay. So front, our word for things in front is anterior. Our word for things in back is posterior.
okay? So we're gonna keep those two terms. Now remember, I said if you have shape, you have color, and you have direction, you're there, right? So see this horn here? See how it's facing the back? And see the color. This is the posterior gray horn. Dun, dun, dun. See this one facing the front? What direction is it? Anterior. What color is it? Gray. What's the shape? Horn. This is the anterior gray horn. Dun, dun, dun. And then depending on where you are in the spinal cord, because to be honest, it's not throughout the entire spinal cord, you can have a horn here to the side. So middle, the directional term was medial, to the side was lateral. So in this case, it's going to be the lateral gray horn, okay? So we've got the butterfly horns done. Do you see this little piece of gray matter that connects the two wings together? That little piece of gray matter is where it commiserates. I always think of the word commiserate, where it comes together, where they come together and they discuss things. Well, that area of gray matter that actually connects the two wings is called the gray commissure. That's why I say commiserate, they come together. So you've got the gray commissure. Again, know the color, you're kind of halfway there. So, see this? This looks like a hole, right? Well, think about this for a second. Your spinal cord is not a piece of lifesaver like this. It's actually this really long tube, right? So if you've got this hole in the center here, that tube actually travels down that entire distance, right? So that is centered one, but it's not just a hole, it's a canal. It's actually a whole um, tube. So we call this the central canal because it is in the center, but it's also this long tube. It isn't just um, this little piece, this little lifesaver piece that we've sliced so that we can see. Okay. Keeping this shape in mind, okay, let me do that. If I've got the butterfly, let me just redraw it, I'm trying to be lazy. If I've got my butterfly, right, with my central canal, and I've got this long piece of spinal cord, right? Let's say I just isolate this one piece of white matter here. It would kind of look like this. That shape is a column. So just like we said that the gray matter resembled a horn, the white matter resembles a column. Again, if you know direction, you know the color, and you know the shape, you don't have to memorize anything. So here, what direction was this? Well, this was posterior. What color is it? It's white. You can't see that now. It's white. Hang on. Ugh. Let's see. So what color is it? It's white. What's the shape? It's a column. So this area right here is the posterior white column. Again, for me personally, I'm going to use posterior, but you can use dorsal. There's nothing wrong with that. On the sides here, what direction is that? It would be lateral, right? Just like our horn that went to the side was lateral. 
What color is it? It's white. What shape is it? It's a column. So you have the lateral white column, okay? Now, there's a piece of white matter in the front here. So again, what direction? Anterior, what color? White, what shape? Column. So this can be called the anterior white column or the ventral white column. Doesn't matter which one you wanna use. Now notice that just like with the middle of our butterfly, this half and this half are being connected by a little piece of that white tissue. So just like we call this the gray commissure, we call this the white commissure. And it's just that little piece of tissue, it's not the whole column that is the white commissure, okay? So you've got the white matter, you've got the gray matter. Now notice, I've got kind of a fold here, but here I've got this really, really deep groove, right? So again, let's go with direction. Direction would be anterior. Now, where is it located? Well, it's in the middle, so median. Now, this is a pretty deep fold. It's not just a groove, there's actually some invasion here, so we call it a fissure. So, this is the anterior median fissure, the front middle crack, okay? Now in the back, I also kind of have a bit of a fold, but it's more of a groove. It doesn't go in like this does. So since it's a groove, it's not a fissure. It's just kind of, like I said, a groove. So what direction? Posterior, where is it located? In the middle. But instead of saying a fissure, because it really isn't, it's just that kind of little groove, we call it a sulcus. And you will see sulcus come up again when we're talking about the heart because there are these little grooves where um, the heart, uh, arteries and veins actually sit. They sit in these little grooves that we talk about. Okay, so we've got the spinal cord proper labeled. Now let's talk about these branches that are coming off of it. So do you see these little branches here and these little branches here? And they're little, they're just so tiny, they're just precious. They're just so precious and tiny, right? These here in the front and these here in the back. Again, direction. In the front, you have the anterior rootlets. I always think of chiclets, you know, the gum in the little yellow package and it's little teeny tiny pieces of gum. That's what I think of. Okay, so you've got the rootlets in the front and then you've got the rootlets in the back or the posterior rootlets. You can also call them ventral and dorsal. That's fine. I just prefer anterior and posterior myself. Now, if you notice here, they all kind of merge together into one big root. Okay, and you can see that going from these individual rootlets to this big root here. This is the ventral root or the anterior root. Does the same thing in the back. Here's my posterior rootlets. They all merge together into the posterior or dorsal root. Again, don't care which one you use. You can use either one, it's fine. But we go from these little cute rootlets to this root. Now, I want you to notice that in the back here, I actually do have that kind of bulging um, structure that we talked about when we were on the first picture of the chapter. That is going to be a ganglion. Remember I said that's where when you're braiding it together where the cell bodies are, it kind of pooches out. So you've got the dorsal root turning into the dorsal root ganglion. And then where these two merge together, the dorsal and the ventral root, that's the spinal nerve. That's what actually comes out of the vertebra 
um, from your spinal cord to feed into your body and to come back into your central nervous system. So looking at a slide, well, that's not helpful. <sighs> Hang on, let me erase this. <laughs> 